Hello all you amazing people, it is Riley LH here with another video and today we are making our own turbo manifold. So I'm doing a T28 turbo on the Miata and it's something that's hard to find a turbo manifold for for cheap. T3 slash T4 turbos you can find them manifolds for next to nothing and that are decent quality. Now I got this kit from Dave Fab on eBay for like 120 bucks and honestly I'm not very happy with it. If you see, yeah, the flange is warped out of the box, pretty bad. They did give me, I think, a 10 or 20% discount, and that's it. They wouldn't go and refund it, so I could go and get a new one. They wouldn't pay to go and uh, do anything crazy. So what I'm going to do is take this, these two pieces of metal. I went ahead and welded them together, got them flat, and as well, I'm going to go and uh, tack half this down. I'm going to go heat it up compress it in the vise, and then tack the other side down, get it as flat as possible. Then I'm gonna go take a piece of glass, go and put Sharpie or paint marker on it, rub the um, flange on it so then I can find my high spots, grind down until it's an all uniform color, and then I'll can know. Then i know that it's perfectly flat, and then I'll go and sand it down from there, make sure it's a nice smooth surface. And when I go and weld the pipes onto the flange, it should keep it pretty flat, so I don't think that's going to be an issue anymore. Of course, before you go and make your own manifold, if you're doing a kit like this, make sure that you go and test fit it to the car. I already test fit it. It does fit up, so I know this flange is for the right make and model, so now I can actually go and start making the manifold. Okay, like I said, we're going to go ahead and tack down the flange on one side so it lifts the other, and then we'll go and compress it in the vise and go and tack the other side. Well, it seems I instantly blew the lights out. Uh, let me try to fix that real quick. Okay, so now I'm back. The lights should be fixed so we can actually tack this. Now that's tacked into place on one side, we're gonna break the vise loose. We're gonna get this so this will squeeze in there. Okay, so now we're gonna heat it up and then bend it in the vise, tack that down, and then we'll go and actually start cutting and welding the pipes on. And the reason I'm going and welding and tacking this down first is to make sure that it's fully flat so when I put on the pipes, the measurements aren't thrown off and we have huge gaps. Okay, so now we're gonna try bending. That worked perfectly. Oh my God, I could not be any happier with that. That bent straight down, that's perfectly flush. I'm beyond happy with that. All right. Okay, so now that this is fully tacked down, we can actually go and start our cutting of the pipes. Or we can forget that this is heavy again and drop it. Now when the flange was warped, I did go ahead and start cutting a piece. So it's a little bit more cut than I'd like farther back, but it should still work. Let's hope. Um, so we're gonna test and see that now. Um, okay, so I do need to shave a little bit off this 90, but pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to go through, do two pipes at a time, mark them, and then move on. So we're going to start with these since I already cut them. Now it, they need to go together a little bit closer, which means that 90 needs to be cut about however much that gap is. Okay, so this black marker is of course doing nothing, so I'm gonna go get something so I can scribe this a little bit, so I can understand where I actually need cut. Okay, to cut these pipes, I am using a cold cut saw that I'm borrowing from one of my friends. It's gonna make perfectly straight cuts that I can rely on, and as well, I don't wanna do this with an angle grinder. You can, I've seen people do it, and it works, and you can also do this with like a table band saw. 
um, and that works great, but I don't have my table bandsaw just made, made just yet, and that's not going to get as straight of cuts because this has the flat edge. So I'm going to take advantage of the tools that I have, and I'm going to use this. Okay, so now that we have these two lining up perfectly, we can go and start going down more. I'm going to do the next T, cut those, and then I'll go and do the next 90. Okay, so now that all the pipes line up perfectly, we're gonna go and take them off and we gotta go and squish the edges of these so they go and compress and go around this oval shape instead of being a circle. Okay, so like I said, we gotta go and get the pipe around these ovals perfectly, so we're just gonna go and put it in the device, line it up, and then we're gonna compress it together. After a very painstaking time of ovaling these out, it would have been okay if my vise was actually bolted down to the table, but this is just a thin sheet metal, um, I don't even know, what was this, a shelf? Sheet metal shelf? And I was like, yep, let's turn this into a welding table and just chucked my vise on it. So, it's not very sturdy. Um, so I'd have someone hold it as I was twisting the vise with my, um, extension off my jack. It worked. They're now not round, they're oval, and it all fits up. So now we gotta go and get all this black anti-rust coating off. And as well, I already did, but make sure you bevel those edges so you get good penetration with the welds. So I grinded off all the coating off the flange and the pipes. I would definitely suggest doing this. You're gonna get much better welds this way. Um, and everything's tapered, ovaled off, and it's ready to be tacked. Okay, so the turbo manifold is welded. I am gonna do another pass weld to make sure I'm getting any pinholes and it's as strong as it can be. But now we're gonna go ahead and install the flange. So I'm gonna put the flange right there, pretty much right at cylinder two. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace this out with marker and I'm gonna cut it out with an angle grinder and knock that out. And then after that, I'll go ahead and, uh, and then I'll go and use these so I can go and merge the piping to the flange itself. So let's go ahead and get this marked up. There we go, so now that's marked, so we can go ahead and drill this all out and angle grinder it out.
Now that the hole is drilled in the manifold, it is actually time to install the flange. But first, we gotta go and weld this to a piece of metal, or you can go and get a fixture for it. I'm just gonna go and weld it to a piece of metal to make sure this does not warp, because you don't want big boost leaks. So let's go ahead and tack this around, and then we'll go ahead and start installing it onto the manifold. Okay, so now that this is all tacked up, we're gonna let it cool down for a second, and then we can go ahead and start test fitting it to the manifold and start bending those tabs. Okay, so now it's time to go and put in these tabs. We do have to bend them in the vise, and this slightly rounded edge will then go over the pipe perfectly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and pretty much bend that right at those notches there. So let's go ahead and take this whole fixture out of the vise, and then we'll go and bend this. Now, I have no clue of how much I'm going to bend this, so I'm going to do this slowly and continuously check it. So, I think I'm going to have to do pretty much very close to a 90 degree angle, so we're going to put it back in the vise, drop my hammer, and bend it a little bit more. Okay, so now that we have our tabs bent up, it's actually time to weld the flange onto the manifold. Okay, so now that the whole manifold is welded up, the flange is on, I did actually already cut the tacks on the flange, but now we're going to go ahead and cut the tacks on the whole manifold and get that off, and then we'll do a little bit of grinding to make sure all the bolts clear and finishing touches, and then get her on the car. Okay, so now that the manifold is welded up inside and out, it's cut off the tacks, it's its own manifold now. I did test fit it on the car because I was way too excited. I did port out the insides a little bit and I did grind it down most of the way. But before we go and fully grind it down, I'm gonna go and flatten the surface. So when I got this from Dave Fab, these flanges were not flat, not close. They are extremely warped, even with heating them up, bending them straight, tacking them to the piece of steel, heating them up several times, trying to make sure it's as flat as possible. Nor do I feel like taking this to the machine shop, so what we're gonna do is a trusty old trick, and we're literally just gonna use our grinder and a piece of glass. Okay, so, correction, I'm not actually gonna use Sharpie. It just doesn't apply well enough and it dries way too fast. So, since I don't have any, um... Bearing blue, I'm just gonna be using some yellow paint. I'm gonna make sure this is mixed up and I'm gonna try to apply as thin of a layer as I can. And then put the manifold on it and go from there as well. Um, since I don't have bearing blue, it's not gonna be as precise with just pure paint. But since I have the uh, straight edge, it kind of evens it out in my opinion. So let's just add a little bit of paint. I'm just gonna add a couple dots, not very much. And now we're going to spread this out evenly, as thin and even as possible. So now we get our blazing hot manifold, place it on there, we're just going to twist it around. That high spot is definitely in the middle. Lift it up, and you can kind of see where our extremely high spots are. And now that we can see our high and low points, we're simply just going to go and take a grinding wheel and grind this off. I did let it have a little bit of time to let it dry so it doesn't instantly splatter off. But now we can actually go and see our high points. We have a high point there, 
all of that to high point and just shave off the yellow. Don't shave off more than that. Be slow with it. You're gonna have to do it a lot of times, yes, but in the end it will be worth it. Okay, well, you can see the car has a turbo manifold on it. And now, yes, I already have a rag on it. I already have placed turbo on it. And a sneak peek for next video, I did the downpipe. Now, I'm not gonna show you that just yet. You guys are gonna have to watch next week's video, but I'm very happy with how this turbo manifold turned out. For just being, what, my third time ever welding um, and having very little to no fabrication experience. This looks really good. Now, yes, the one visible weld is the worst and it looks not very great. My other welds look a lot better than that and I'm annoyed that I started there, but hey, it works. That's all that really matters. I did put some high temp clear coat on it. I let it sit and then grind down all the rust and stuff and then I just put some high temp clear on it to make sure that the turbo manifold didn't rust and look like crap after a little bit. So that is high temp cleared. I leveled out the flange as you guys seen, and this is officially done. I can chuck on the turbo. It, I ran it with the turbo. No leaks, no anything. I'm so happy with it. So the question is, should you go and make your own turbo manifold? If you're trying to save some money and you wanna be able to learn how to fabricate, yeah, go for it. Now, yes, take your time, be slow, do your research. If you do all that, you're gonna be able to get a really good turbo manifold for really cheap. Now it took me about five days to do, which is a lot slower than what I could have done it, but I learned a lot. I made sure I was doing everything as properly as I could. It's welded inside and out, except on the pipes, just on the um, runners, I mean, just on the flange. Both of the flanges are welded inside and out to make sure this does not leak. I leak tested it and stuff. And I'm not seeing anything when I hook an air compressor up to it and um, get as much air in there as possible and spray soapy water on it, not seeing any bubbles. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good. Now, just be careful. It can crack, so you may not save money in the end, but in reality, it, you know the insides and outs of it, so you can always go and re-weld it and learn as you go on. So if you guys have learned anything or just purely enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, comment, you know, all that good jazz. And I hope you guys have a great day. Peace out.